But before getting into that, I feel like we I'm should- I'm so sorry. I just swallowed right into the microphone. You. Like so-and-so is pregnant and we'd be like, on purpose? And I was like, why would you do this to yourself? Because I'm insane and I'm like competitive. How do I put this into words? Sorry, I'm on tangent. No, no, no. But I'm so glad you got your period. I know, yay! <laughs> no baby! I know, yay! Not yet. The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Pretty basic. I cannot believe that it is almost 2024. That is insane. I swear it just turned 2023. Uh, I remember going and we had a fun ski trip. We went to Aspen's for New Year's Eve last year and it was so much fun. It was so fun dressing up for actual cold weather and the snow. It seriously was so magical and it felt like a little winter wonderland. And it was so fun seeing everyone's like New Year's Eve looks because it was my first time really actually having plans for New Year's Eve. I feel like I always want to. Then I end up either never doing anything or just or staying home and being cozy. But it was so fun to go out, go dancing, see everyone wearing like sequins and sparkles. And I definitely want to do something like that again this year. I don't know what that'll be. But I can guarantee you that my New Year's Eve look is going to look amazing. And that's because I will most definitely get it from Macy's. And that's because Macy's has all of the New Year's Eve looks to start your year off right. You can find sparkly mini dresses for your midnight toasts, all the accessories you could ever need for your full out glam look and a signature red lip to top it all off. I low-key hope I'm going to be kissing someone. So maybe I won't do a red lip, but maybe we'll do a little like a little cute glitter gloss, you know? (laughs) It's going to be funny if I end up just staying home in my PJs. But you know what? I bet those PJs will be cute and sparkly too. Regardless, I'm so excited for 2024 and I cannot wait to see your guys' New Year's Eve looks. I have a feeling it's going to be an amazing year. Send me pics of what you're wearing. Check out Macy's.com slash own your style. Hello, guys, and welcome back to Pretty Basic. Today, we are very excited because we are recording the last episode of season five of Pretty Basic, which is so exciting. And I cannot believe that we have completed our fifth year of this podcast. No, Remy, half a decade. That is, I didn't even think about it that way. Half a decade. That is really crazy. It's gone by so quickly. Yet also so slowly at the same time. Honestly, I feel like that's a perfect example of how I feel about this year. You know, what's crazy to think like we've been really actively posting for like around a decade or a little bit more on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Half the time that we've been online, we've been doing the podcast, but it, it doesn't feel like that in a way. It just feels so fresh and youthful and lively. No, I don't. I like <laughs> it's just crazy to me that some of you guys have also been listening for five years. Yeah, That's insane. Please call if you're on the YouTube video, please comment below when you started listening to the pod or watching. Obviously, yeah. if you're on YouTube, yeah, which if you are, the set is so winter wonderland, wonderland, <laughs> wonderland, wonderland themed. Cute. We love it. We love it. Also, I cut my bangs yesterday. <gasps> They're back. They're oh, banging. I like honestly can never keep up. I can't keep up with your hair. I can't keep up with my hair. We change it every day. I know. And I never used to be that type of person. Yeah. I, I just like get no, bored. Changing it. I just chop my hair right before coming in here. It looks so it's like good. A, was it a chop? Yes. I asked Amanda at the salon and she was like, it's like a, a healthy cut. Because okay. It's not like a bob, but like it's a, it's short. No, it's one. It's short. Two. I will trim two inches off my hair and I'm like, wow, I cut my a hair. A nice chop. I I'm mean, like, this I'm like was, I chopped it. This was the first time I've gotten just a sole haircut since I was like in middle school because uh, well, actually no, probably like high school because I started getting extensions in college. And so since then, anytime I got my hair done, like I would get like a, a light trim a and then just like, you know, trying to grow my, like get the longest extensions yeah. possible. But like, I like cut my hair for real. And I like yesterday, Alicia was with our hairstylist and I was like, do I show up with wet hair? Like I forgot <laughs> how, what you do when you get a haircut. Yeah. I like truly forgot, but I got it chopped and it looks, your bangs look amazing. No. My hair feels healthy for, it for once. <laughs> looks so healthy. Thank you. I just like, and I just think back to, was it? 2018 or 2019? When my hair was falling out of my head. Quite literally. 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. Your contact photo in my phone is still (sighs) your hair when you had, I kid you not, like an inch because you had so much breakage. So much breakage. something, like that was after 
the trend of having that silver ashy blonde. And that's all I wanted though. But with Asian hair, it's really hard because we have like a reddish tone naturally underneath. So that's why like my hair always looks like a little bit red, no matter how much I dye it. Like Asian hair, when you bleach it, just has a red orange tone. So to go from that to gray is like so hard. You have to bleach way past that, break the hair, um, which is why in 2018, I had clumps of my hair coming out. Oof. I also was like trying to get my hair to be like icy, but my hair was like yellow orange. So I put purple shampoo on and let it sit for hours, not hours, probably like 20 minutes when it's supposed to only be like three minutes. And then I would wash it out and some of my hair would be purple and some of my hair would be orange. <laughs> so complimentary. I know. I honestly, I had it all figured out, but yes. Oh my God. My well, hair see, when I had blonde hair, I would put purple shampoo and leave it on as a mask, but mm-hmm. obviously did all of my hair. Yeah. Because your extensions, the extensions those would pull orange. so much quicker. Yeah. No, the extensions would be purple because oh. they just, they soak it yeah. all up and my real hair would be orange that's cr- it's just crazy because i <laughs> pay to have warmth and like a red tint to my hair well i was gonna say maybe your hair also didn't get so damaged with the blonde because you have like a naturally lighter base than people oh think. yeah it's like an ashy brown mm-hmm. so that's easy to pull you out see my, my roots yeah it looks like i kind of have like gray hair when my hair has so much color i hair. love an ashy brown i would like kill to have ashy brown hair it's just crazy how everyone truly wants what they don't have grass is always greener yeah, I think I, I feel very lucky. I feel like my hair has always been pretty healthy, but I you will say I don't do much heat to it. That's and I've the key. always been that way. Even like, I'll usually just let it air dry. Oh yeah, no me. I'm like blasting that shit every day, mm. but I'm learning and my hair's growing and your bangs look amazing. Thanks. They bang in, <laughs> we bang in again. <laughs> every time you say the bangs are banging, I always think of Lana. Bangs on fleek. Bangs on fleek. Oh. Which honestly is a great way to like segue into this episode because we were talking about what we wanted to talk about in the last episode of the year. Obviously, Christmas has just ended. If you're listening to this when we post it and uh, the holidays are over, actually not over. We're, we're getting into New Year's very soon, but we usually do a resolutions episode. Yeah, I feel like the first few years are pretty basic we would do a a full dedicated like new year's resolution type of episode we'd go through we have 20 things on our list and then i think even last year it was like very chill Mm -hmm. but I, i still like that idea and keeping that tradition but um i thought one thing we could do different is i don't know if you saw it but i posted a tiktok of things that i want to work on and i was thinking how that could be a really cool take even obviously if you're listening feel free to steal it opposed to like new year's resolutions because I know you don't like New Year's resolutions or just like the idea of like writing down goals that like, right? I don't mind writing them down. I just think resolu- when I think of resolutions, I think of like go to the gym, eat healthy, wake up early. Like no very, sugar. exactly. Like <laughs> yeah. very like, which I mean, you can make your resolutions whatever you want, but I'm just like not a resolution based person because I don't know. I just, I, I don't like setting myself up to not do things that I like don't necessarily want to do. I don't know if that's like a bad thing to say. No, oh my God, I fully see that. Especially the the cliche New Year's resolutions yes. that are out there. Yeah, they usually last like a month. Like the idea. The gym memberships. Yeah, I was just going to say the idea that the gyms do um, at the, the top of the year, like money off, big savings, and then they like count on those people to never show up to keep the gym running. So I think of that all the time. I've done the resolutions with you on the pod before Mm -hmm. and it's not that I'm against them, but I love things that I'm working towards so much more because I think that it just gives yourself more grace. Well, also in a year, it's it's a gray area of like, you then get to decide if you met it or not. Did I I ever tell you like how crazy Ash and I would be about New Year's resolutions? No. So- we love a challenge. I really love a challenge. And I remember one year we were like, we were young. Oh my God, probably in high school. And, or was it middle school? I think it might have been middle school. My friends and I like had a bet, like, oh, I bet I could give up soda for like a year. Like, I bet I could just like not drink it or something like that. And then the other person chimes in like, well, I could do that, whatever. So we were like, okay, cool. We're not going to have soda for a year. We did it like a whole year. Mm-hmm. Dr. Pepper was my shit. I do love a Dr. Like, Pepper. Oh, um, I was like, okay. And it was funny because anytime we brought it up to people, they were like, oh, is it for Lent? Like, are you giving it up for a religious reason? I'm like, no, it was literally just like a challenge. Yeah. Like, I don't- <laughs> Can don't, I do it? Yeah, yeah, can I do it? Let's see how long we can go. Yeah. Um, which just kind of tracks with my personality, but end up going an entire year. Then I go to in and now Ash and are so excited. We drive through, we get a double, double. I get my Dr. Pepper, like we go home. And we, we eat it all and I drink the soda and I'm expecting it to be like fireworks in my yeah, mouth. Like yeah, I yeah. want, I'm not, I want pop rocks in my mouth. Like I'm yeah. expecting the carbonation to be 
insane, right? And I have a sip and it tasted so flat and sugary that I didn't like it. And I was like, I was like- uh, Maybe you just got a bad batch? I should have had a can instead of like the fountain maybe, mm-hmm. but I thought the fountain would be better. I don't know. But I remember being like, wow, I just like had it so different in my head what it would be. Yeah. So then the next year comes around, we're like, okay, cool. Like we did soda, what should we do next? And then someone's like, what about French fries? And I was like, why would you do this to yourself? Because I'm insane and I'm like competitive. I did cut out soda for three years when I was a kid as well, just for fun. But I don't know why I did that, but like I would never cut out French fries. You could never get me to cut out French fries. I was trying to think what's better than soda. So then we're like, okay, let's try to do French fries. We successfully did it. Okay. A year. A year. No fr- no reason. No fucking reason. That's just like <laughs> like you could die tomorrow. Why do that to yourself? I know. No, no, no. Quite literally, because after that year, I will say I ha I cannot tell this is embarrassing. I can't tell you how many nightmares I had where I ate French fries. <laughs> Not a nightmare. My subconscious was like, don't eat like just like like be like I was I'd wake up and be like, oh my God, I didn't break it. Like Not I was so a scared. Nightmare. No, literally multiple, multiple multiple um they were like stress dreams but i will say that whole year finally and we just got in the habit of saying like oh can we have fruit on the side or oh can we have like anything else and what's funny is i guess i could have had potatoes like it wasn't like it was just the idea of not having french fries yeah just challenging yourself yeah yeah. i remember being like eight and i was out also like at a a fountain thing and i remember being like i'm just gonna cut out soda and i did for like four three or four years and then I started drinking soda again, but then after, like it was just too strong. Like I only recently started getting into carbonation like the past year again and being able to like drink, right? I love my poppies. Yeah. Like I like that carbonation. I like a Sprite every now and then. I love a Sprite every now and then. I love a Dr. Pepper. I love like, yeah, every once in a while, but I do chug a Celsius. I will say I've gotten to the point now (laughs) where I can, but like for years after it would like sting my throat because I took so much time off. Oh my God. Yes. So we, we kept up the soda one. Like even I don't drink soda that much, um, but I have my Celsius all the time. I'm poppy. But um, the year went by, we go back to in and out. We get the soda, we get the French fries. So now we've gone two years without soda. We get the soda and the French fries. Soda, I was like, I could easily go without that. The French fries, I was like, I'm never doing that to myself again. No, you shouldn't. And I never regretted it. Good. You got to have French fries. You got to live. And then we stopped doing those insane challenges because we're like, I mean, we can do it, but what's the point? (laughs) I'm like, what's the actual point? Like literally no point. (laughs) I love a curly fry. I think it's like a kid thing though. I think it's like, I I see it. I get it. And when your friends are doing it too, it's like a challenge or whatever. But so we're not doing any, I'm not going to say stupid. We're not going to do any insane resolutions like that, but Regardless, I do think we should talk about like things that we just want to work on. I still love resolutions. I love like keeping myself accountable or having like, I think I'm more so like looking back and seeing, um, cause I have like a list in my phone and one of my locked notes, which I mentioned this to someone the other day. They didn't know you can lock your notes. And I was like, oh, I have so many no, locked notes. No, literally. Did you know you could pin notes too at the top? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I love the pin. Guys, but don't forget your password on the locked note because- I do face ID. Oh, have you tried putting a photo of you? No. I wonder if that would make, no, I feel like it's like somewhat 3D. I don't know, but let's try that later. We should try that. They, that, they had to figure that out. I'm sure. Watch, <laughs> we're like, we hacked it. <laughs> <laughs> we're like girl scientists, like, wow, I bet FBI is over here. Tim Cook. Yeah, I bet they didn't think about that. But I have a list in my phone that's like little checklist of like things that I wanted at one point. And then it's weird, like when that stuff happens. Yeah. Like for instance, one of them was, I was like, I really want to work with Canon. And <gasps> I ended up having like my Canon shooting campaign. So I love being able to look back being like, wow, this is something I wanted at one point. Like, and I didn't even know it was possible. And now I can look back and like, be like, wow, I did that, yeah, you know? For sure. I think that's amazing. But before getting into that, what were the, like, I want to talk about highs and lows of the year. Ooh, uh, fun. Hi proposal <gasps> which does not feel like forever i know yes. i know have to say that one obviously that was a high another high was lana obviously because that just like bonded us like even more than it happening it bonded us together as a union even more than i thought we could be bonded before i just never experienced a high like that in my life <laughs> ever and it's unfortunately true. i don't think i ever will again it's true but i true like truly the I, and i loved how I knew we all felt the same way. For sure. Like, I, that was so cool. We went on Alexa Lozzi's podcast and I was saying how like, obviously the proposal was such a high and like something that you dream of your whole life and blah, 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 blah. The Lana high was a different kind of high. <laughs> and then two, it's like a second wave, just boom. Like that was actually insane. Because you just can't, like I never in a million years would have 
thought that would even happen. Like I knew at one point Cal and I would get proposed or yeah. get engaged. So I was like, it'll come eventually. And wow, that was such a beautiful moment. And I, again, high of the year, just something so unexpected that you can't even like think up happening was crazy. That was definitely my highs. Oh my God. I feel like, I mean, a huge high for me was you getting engaged. <laughs> no, no, no. Something else. Something else. No, like actually <laughs> when I think back of the year, your proposal stands out. Like no, me tracking you on find my friends yeah. being like, she moved from the corner. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Lana, of course. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I just thought of my red hair because that just like stands out to me. I mean, yeah. I mean the Canon campaign. I feel like work's been like really fucking good this year, which is crazy. Cause this year more than any other year, which this just makes sense. I feel like I tried less and it was like the best work year of my career. Well, also compared to last year when you were mentally going through it, yeah. like what a beautiful contrast. I don't know if now I just care less about like exact mo like money or how much I make or whatever, but like, I feel like this year has been so fulfilling, even working and partnering with brands who like, I never thought I would be able to, or maybe I'm uploading less or, and, and being, you've always yelled at me to like be less hard on myself of making, like if I need to take a break, I can, or like not wearing myself out to make sure I hit a certain upload or whatever. I don't know. I feel like this has been a big evolving year for me. And I just feel like the most confident I ever have, Good. which has been awesome. I think like, honestly, the confidence obviously comes from within and with the the validation from like the work opportunities and things of course that happens I bet like I in my head the red goes hand in hand with that though because I feel like the red hair just made you so confident in your in yourself and like a bad like it, it too like tuned into your bad bitch inner self no I'm like maybe I don't know why obviously that comes to my I mean, I had it for a while, but I think, yeah, I feel like I never would have done something. I feel like it unlocked. Something like no, that. I agree. I think it like you took a, a chance, like a big, um, like, I don't know, a leap in a, in a way, yeah. but I do think I, I totally see that. Also the confidence also comes from living alone. Like I lived alone yeah. for a year and that was always my biggest, truly one of my biggest, like, not insecurities, but like, I was always so terrified to ever have to live by myself ever since I was literally like a, a wee lad. <laughs> like I always was like, oh my God, like I hated the dark. I was always so scared of it. Like I'd get crippling anxiety if I had to like stay at my house by myself. Like how many times did I like come over to your apartment in downtown? I'd be no, like, no, I get it. I'd be like, Ashley's out of town. Can I stay over here? Like there was a point in my life where I never experienced living alone. So then I would be so down on myself because I'm like, you are a woman in her mid twenties and like you can't stay at your own house by yourself. And I felt so embarrassed by that. And then of course it didn't help thinking of just like security and thinking of, you know, crazy people like trying to break in or like that was always a huge, huge anxiety and fear of mine. And last week I had therapy and my therapist had lost like a, a paper of mine. So she was digging through my file to find it. And she comes across one of my early, early, early pages, literally the day I met her. So during our session, she brings it up and said, I thought this would be really fun to go over and look at it and see how many of the things are still true to you or are still, you know, stressors or how many things you've overcome. And one of them was like being scared of the dark and like being terrified to stay at my house by myself. Um, another one was just like dating in general, um, little things. And I was like, oh my God, that's not an issue anymore. That's not an issue anymore. And it was so crazy cool. That's awesome. And I didn't even notice I had overcome half of those things mm -hmm. until she brought them up. And I distinctly remember being back in that place um, it was even like walking into a, a room of strangers. And now I've thought of how many like events or parties I like I'll go to by myself. Yeah. And even that's like such a win. So I'm like, it's so important that's to look huge. back at like your little wins in life, you know? Hello guys, Remy dropping in to talk to you about Skims. I love Skims more than I love anything in this world, truly. And I love the holidays as well, but shopping is always a daunting task. If you guys are like me and you have so many people to buy gifts for, friends, family, mother-in-law, father-in-law, cousins, all the things, Skims has just announced its biggest holiday gift shop ever. And when I tell you guys they have something for everybody, I have already shopped on there for myself and I got so many cute things. I 
got some really cute little onesie pajamas and the cutest little winter print. Also, I went on there. Oh my God, I saw they had like the cutest dog sweaters. I'm going to get those next, but they have something for everybody, whether it's yourself or for your family. I also love to go on there and get, you know, some nice t-shirts for Cal or some cute loungewear for Ollie or for Alicia or, or anybody in my life. Skims is creating the next generation underwear, loungewear, and shapewear. Truly, you guys, one of my dreams is to do like a cute little family photo with Cal and the dogs and I. So I think I need to get on there and buy the cute little matching pajama sets for Cal and I, and then the little dog sweaters for all the dogs. And I also love it because they make last minute gift shopping so easy. My favorite part of the Skims holiday gift shop is that their best selling holiday collections come wrapped and ready to go and prepackaged Skims holiday boxes. So you basically just order them. They come to your door, you stick them under the tree and you are good to go. Or if you're also building a ton of stockings like myself this year, you can get some socks. Oh my God. I just bought the scarves and the headbands. So cute. So Skims makes holiday shopping so easy with styles for everyone in the family. Skims holiday gift shop is the destination for all of your gifting needs. Believe the hype. Skims has over a hundred thousand five-star reviews for a reason. Skims holiday gift shop is now open at skims.com. Plus get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know we sent you. Select podcasts in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop down menu that follows. You had such an unconventional journey with like living alone because you, you lived with your sister your whole entire life until she moved out this year. Like that's not yeah. super conventional. So I think that you should like give yourself more grace with that because living alone in general is scary. And also it brings on a lot of responsibilities and things. Like I didn't even recognize till I moved in on my own. I was fully like, oh, when the door shut and I was alone by <laughs> myself with mover. my thoughts. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Like it's, it's a full thing. It's a, priv- a privilege to be able to live on your own, but it also brings on a lot of of scares and responsibility and things, but I think you handled it very gracefully. Thank you. And like you had someone living with you for such a long part of your life. Like, I think that it's super normal oh that God, you felt that way. You. No, oh my God, I was, I was, that was seriously one of the things I was always the most embarrassed about. Like I would never talk about it. Cause I'm like, that's so embarrassing. You didn't live alone? That I was scared to like be by myself. No, it's, it's harder to be by yourself than be with other people. Oh my God. But then the fact that I thrived and loved living alone was like such an oxymoron. And I was just like, this is insane. I was like, this is like, a, yeah, it was really weird. Obviously like there was times I felt more alone, but I think it actually made my friendship stronger. Yeah. Cause then I'd be like, hi, can I come over and board? Yeah. You have to make an effort with more people also. Yes. I loved when I first lived alone, I remember being like, wow, this is great because I'd go out with so many people and like have fun things during the day. And then when the door would shut and I'd be alone, I'd be like, oh, okay, it's just me now. What am I gonna do to keep myself busy? Yeah. How am I gonna keep this place clean? Like all those things. I think that it was a wonderful learning lesson for you. And I'm so happy it went in the way that it did. Yeah, so that was definitely a high. Do you have other highs of the year? Highs. Um, I mean, yes, I, I also agree. Work stuff has been so great this Remy, year. Remy, I'm very proud of you. Thank you so much. There was something recently that obviously you can talk about. Yeah, I'm being an annoying influencer. influencer. But you will. And not for a while, but yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> Just like a lot of things, I feel the same way. Um, I feel like I let myself slip into some overwhelming work moments this year, which I guess we'll get more into later when we talk about other things, but I have tried my best to figure everything out and figure out how I best deal with stressors in my life. Mm. I'm still working on it now. So again, we'll get into that, but I, I am high, I think is just bringing new people onto the team and figuring out everyone's place, becoming more secure in myself as a boss Mm -hmm. and using my voice has been a really big thing that I've been working on this year. And yeah, I guess that's definitely a high. Other high would be, I mean, Shane being cancer free, brain cyst, probably not growing. (laughs) Um, Yeah, just like uh, truly a high is, as, a, as low as all the health stuff was, everyone doing well now. And holding. And baby holding. Oh my God, yeah. You're an aunt. I'm an aunt. We've dreamt of the day you that you would be an aunt. I know. He's so cute and chunky and adorable. And yeah, definitely high. It's just the family growing. Uh, mm-hmm. That's like such a, a, a unique feeling that I've never had before. But to like see my, when my grandma came over, it was my grandma, my dad, my brother and Holden all together. And so like four generations all on one couch was really cool to see. Definitely just like new life being born. I, see, I haven't, I haven't experienced that yet either. And I like, I feel like I'm late on that. I feel like it's most like people, fuck. I can't wait. And I'm so jealous of people who have grown up with that, you yeah. know, like, but I am, I, I'm sure that also can be hard at times if you don't you know, get along with your in-laws or your- Like married in family. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, 
I don't know. I'm excited for that. It's so fun. Shane and I are always just like, oh my God, one day when we have kids or when I have kids and he has a kid having like the cousins do like how we're going to do holidays and how they're going to, I want them to be close and um, living close to each other and just doing those things. It's like, it's crazy that it's real. It's like real. It's, it's real. Like when I'm talking about it, like it could really happen. We could oh really have God. kids and it's like a real plan versus like us fantasizing about the future. I know. I do hope you wait a little bit to have kids because I would love for ours to grow up together. <gasps> and we all know I need a little more time. <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm going to wait a couple more years for sure. Oh my God. Can You're you get gonna... on that timeline? Uh, honestly, yeah. Mine could be like a little bit older I could too. see me with like a We should really line baby. up the, the pregnancy <laughs> stuff. I know. <laughs> I actually um, I could see you with a no, no, no. baby. I, I so told good. someone this the other day, um, which no, like, obviously, like, the, it's just funny thinking of me. Like, obviously, I like I don't care what I've, anyone else does or whatever. But I was like, could you imagine? Could you actually imagine if tomorrow I posted that I was like four months pregnant on IG? Like, what would people think? <laughs> because I just like don't like me. Like, I love when other people do that, but like me. Like just thinking about you being pregnant right now. Like picture I posted tomorrow on my Instagram, like me for like- In I'm your for, second trimester. And everyone's like, we've never even seen you kiss a guy, <laughs> let alone. Like, do you know what but I mean? But like, I wouldn't be that surprised. Really? I really wouldn't be. No, because, well, I mean, you can't even really, you shouldn't really share until you're in the second trimester anyways. True. So it wouldn't be like that crazy. But I just like, it's just funny because it's like school, Isha. Would you? <laughs> no, I mean, you're you're grown. I you're know, a woman I know. now. Sometimes I feel like, sometimes I feel like like if I got pregnant right now, it would still be like, <gasps> versus like, I'm like, Alicia, you're literally about to be 31. Well, like, yeah. it's fine. When my brother got, well, my brother didn't get pregnant. When my brother and his wife got pregnant and I think Shane was like 27 when he told me, I was like, my teenage brother might cannot be having a baby when he's like 15. Like this just can't be <laughs> happening. But you feel so mentally young. I actually just talked to my mom about this because she just turned 60. Happy, Happy belated birthday, Suze. And when I was, we had like a fun day together. We went shopping, we did lunch, we got massages. Like we did a whole thing together. Cute. It was really fun. Um, but I had such a fun time. Like the most fun I had was actually just like driving her around and just having downtime to talk because- um, we were just obviously like reflecting on all of her years and everything like that. And I was like, do you feel 60? Because I was like, 60 is also in the grand scheme of things, hopefully still very young for, you know, your mm -hmm. life. And she was like, no, she's like, I swear. I like mentally, I feel, I think she might've said 30. I forget exactly what she said, but she was like, it, I know my body like is starting to feel older, but like mentally, she's like, I still feel so young. And that's how I feel that's too. Crazy. I think it's a universal experience. Oh my God, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no, I mean, I, I guess sometimes I still think in that like high school self, especially going to like a religious private school, the like, the like, oh my God. Or like if I go on Facebook and it's like someone like is pregnant, I'm like, oh my God. And oh, like, I'm gagged every I'm time. Gagged. I'm gagged. And I'm like, they're literally 28. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's no. okay. Well, I told you about how one Murph and I will call each other if someone from high school is pregnant. This was like a few years ago. Now I'm like, it's finally settled in. I'm yeah. like, everyone's having babies. You're but engaged like, now. You're mature. And like, but like at 24, <laughs> 25, we would call each other. No, maybe like 25, 26. We call each other and he'd be like, like, oh my God, like so-and-so is pregnant. And we'd be like on purpose. And it's like, <laughs> no, yeah, we're like at the point now where like yeah. everybody is probably getting pregnant on purpose. I know. And it's just so funny. Cause again, I mean, I think, I think doing such young content for so long kind of made us feel like stunted a little bit. Well, for sure. I think it just depends too. Like where I'm from, it's very common to get married. Like at 22, 23, everyone like same. still lives there. Everyone was like, their kids are probably going to go to the same high school that we all went to. Like kind of like a towny vibe. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like pretty normal. But I do think when you start to like go outside of the bubble, everybody seems to be getting married a little bit later. But again, it's just different for where you go. But yeah. I mean, I'm 28, almost 29. And I feel mentally, I still feel like 23. But I feel like also a lot of that had to do with COVID. Because mm -hmm. I think I went into COVID at 24. Yeah. I don't know. It's been a weird I feel Mind like fuck. universally everyone feels two years younger. Two I feel years. like 29 in Italy. 29. Oh my yeah. God. I feel like I'm, I'm so young and sprightly still. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, feel like I'm almost 30. It's 21. <laughs> I, exactly. 21 for the eighth time. Maybe but 23? No, maybe I feel like 24, 25. There I could see that. I mean, hearing my mom say that she feels like so much mentally younger. I'm like, maybe this will just be the way forever. But I love that. Live, laugh, love. I think it's great. Um, I mean, I don't want to dwell on lows too much because the highs are better anyway, but like what lows do we have for the year? 
Lows. I mean, obviously all the health stuff was really hard. The few weeks that I would just sit at home crying was not fabulous. Mm-hmm. Not the most fabulous time of my <laughs> life, but that was definitely, that was definitely rough. During that time, I felt very alone, but I, f- I also felt very guilty. And I think this, a lot of people can feel this way, even if it's not regarding like specifically what my situation was, which there were so many things going on in, in my family with health oriented issues that I, I felt like a burden within my family, uh, bringing up any issue that I had, anything that obviously like the big C word Mm -hmm. takes reign over everything else going on. So like anything that I had going on in my life, I was like, it just doesn't even matter. And I felt very alone, even like with the brain stuff going on, I was scared, but I didn't want to like talk to anybody really in my family about it because they had such bigger fish to fry. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely, I felt very alone, but I talked to you on here. Like I would have, if I didn't have you or Cal or Ollie or anybody else in my life that was checking in on me and having such an amazing support system within friends, Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I would have been okay. I think I would have been worse than I already was and I wasn't okay. So that was definitely um, not great, but I feel very grateful to have the people in my life that I do. And I'm very grateful again that everybody's doing okay. Um, another low would probably be, uh, bad comments really got to me this year Mm. a lot, especially like around the proposal. I feel like I was just very sensitive about things and I let it get to me. Um, and I do feel like I kind of put a damper on the proposal. And I feel like, honestly, that's kind of why I've been very like, distant with wedding stuff I think it kind of left like a really sour taste in oh, my mouth like wanting to plan just like in general like I feel like it kind of I let the things affect me a lot which I do think and we talked about this even before I got proposed to like people on the internet are just very uh they always have something to say and specifically mm-hmm. about weddings they have a lot of things to say um so I think I just kind of let that get the best of me I learned very early on though that people have a lot of input about weddings and proposals mm-hmm. and just anything in the wedding realm. So I feel like that taught me my lesson early on, which is nice, but it definitely put a damper a bit on my excitedness with everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like now if I get too excited and talk about how excited I am, I'm being annoying. So I feel like no. I've toned it down a bit, but no, 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 no. no. I mean, you're not annoying <laughs> at all. And also it's your wedding. You're allowed to be annoying. Thank you so much. Also, anyone who's leaving hate is just someone like me who's single and, and literally like, oh my God, it was with me. So like, <laughs> like, it's fine. Like, don't worry about the hate. But I, I know that that was a big thing for you this year. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I honestly... What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Kelly Clarkson, As Kelly Clarkson please said. come on our show. <laughs> no, it was good. And like, I go through, I mean, we've been doing this for so long. I go through waves where, um, and I've talked about this. If I'm not feeling good in myself or I'm not taking care of myself or I'm not putting myself first or I'm not just doing little things to, to just like brighten my own personal day, mm-hmm. things are going to get me down. So it honestly just reminds me that I need to take care of myself and, log the fuck out sometimes yeah just put the fucking phone down Boundaries. sometimes and I mean, i'm like oh i'm so much better that's something i'm trying to work on too mm-hmm. i feel like that's something for that something for the new year that i really want to continue getting better at mm-hmm. is the time like i even last night something happened where i was just feeling like kind of ain't not anxious just off and i was in that scrolling yep i do that too like tunnel vision I don't even you're know. like paralysis. Almost, you're like looking for something to make you have like yes. a little boost. And I told myself, I was like, Alicia, don't look at your DMs. Like, don't mm-hmm. like, just, just tur- put the phone down, yeah. put the phone down put and the, everything and walk okay. away. Literally I've gotten better at listening to that voice who like knows like it's this, okay, you need to get off your phone or whatever it is or have that boundary. And I just want to continue working on that. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I would, uh, this was going back to what you were saying about your family health stuff. I would say to I felt like, um, I related to that guilty feeling because even though I feel like in my little LA bubble, all my friends are like pretty good and healthy. I feel like a lot back home, we have a lot of like family friends who are just literally going through the absolute most shit you could ever imagine. And I even remember my mom one time came out and visited and she was, um, I think I had just gotten back from New York for one of the shoots that I was doing and, and you know, we were chilling and just hanging out and she's like, wow, it's crazy. Cause like I come out here and, and life feels so good, but like going back home, it's just, there's a lot going on in everyone's life. You know, we had like, um, a family, a really dear family friend, um, they found like cancer in his face and then they were able to remove that, but now it went into his lungs. 
Oh. So they're going to have to start radiation um, and chemo next week, I believe. But, you know, my mom's trying to be there for him. And then our other family friend, just a shit ex, soon to be ex-husband um, and also health. Like, just crazy to where I was like, damn, like, I feel I know I shouldn't feel guilty, but I feel guilty in a weird way. I'm like, dude, like what actually matters? And then I complain like, oh my God, I'm sad. Or like, oh my I God, know. this guy doesn't like me. Or like, oh my God, what's going on? Like little stupid shit. You it's know what I mean? It's good perspective though. I, to- yeah. I completely understand what you're, me- like, what you're saying. And when I think about, yeah, the things that are bothering me in the grand scheme of things, drop in the bucket, Lit- walk, bitch, suck those tears back up. Also, <laughs> before my period every month, oh, the, the, the like day before my period, I, I know it's coming. Uh-huh. I get so emotional and I'll like cry. Oh my God. I feel that. And I'm like, Alicia, you're okay. And then my period starts. I'm like, oh my God, I knew it. Like, but I'm like, you would figure by now every 30 days I'd realize, oh, it's just like, just like go through the feeling. Yeah. You're fine. Um, a period is like new for me still. Oh yeah. So yesterday I was in my feels and I was so snappy. I was so <laughs> snappy. I was so like, I was just offended by everything. I was very sensitive. And then I was like, I don't even want to leave the house. I was so upset. And then I was like, I had an appointment. So I left and I was like <laughs> driving. I was like, this is amazing. It was like this, I was scary. You and feel- then I got home, period. Oh, and then you're like, yeah. This is so new for me though. This, yeah. The feelings are just like overwhelming. Like I was like, I was really bothered yesterday. Wait, but I'm so glad you got your period. I know, yay! <laughs> no baby. I know, yay! Not yet. No, not yet. Two more years. <laughs> Moving into like what I want to work on. Um, in that TikTok that I had said, I was like, one thing I kind of really struggle. I just want, I want people online, and I know people who listen to the podcast probably feel this more because we're more vulnerable on here, and we'll talk about things we're struggling with. Um, but especially something like TikTok, like I don't think I've ever been like, hi, I suck at this. You know what I mean? Um, and one of those things was I just really struggle articulating how. I feel Mm -hmm. and I know you've helped me a lot because I'm like oh my god like I can say what I feel and like she's not gonna like yell at me and like cut me out of her life you know what I mean so that's been a huge learning thing this year which is like also a pro like a a high of the year I think I've gotten better when it comes to like confrontation or just like also voicing my like how I feel about things but specifically like articulating that's something I really struggle with that I want to continue getting better at like part of me is so mad I never did a debate thing when I was younger. You know what I mean? I'm like, what didn't click for me? Oh, for sure. I think <laughs> a lot of that also has to deal with like maybe the, the the house that you were raised in though. Yeah. Because I mean, I come from a very, very confrontational family. Like you scream, you yell, and then the next day you're fine. Like that's just how we are. I don't know if that's maybe an Asian family thing too. I, it's definitely like, it has to feed into it. Literal <laughs> passive is like the Marie middle name. Yeah. <laughs> Alicia Passive Marie no, McDonald. Like, but in my head, I'm like, no, like it's fine. It'll sit, figure itself but out it'll by sit nothing. With me. Yep. I think in my head, I think I'm burdening someone more to bring it up than mm. just dealing it, like holding it to myself. I mean, to some degree, you are, but then I make it worse. Exactly. No, (laughs) but like, it's so much it like either way, obviously conflict is always like, it's never a good thing, but it can be a better thing by resolving it. Yeah. If you don't resolve. Exactly. I think it was a lot about the way I was raised. For sure. I think I would have been great in debate because of how I was raised. Just like, (laughs) you got a problem. Just say it out loud. Are you kidding? But for a long time I had trouble articulating as well. Yeah. Oh my God, no, anger wasn't an emotion in my family. Like we weren't able to be angry. Oh, I, <laughs> I've i always, like my mom and I would just like fight with each other when I was young, just because of like, I viewed something one way and she, I'd be like yeah. eight years old and we'd be having like a heated debate See, over I'm it. So, I say jealous, not that I want to like fight with my kid. Yeah, but no, like, no, no, no. Like I, I, like I, I just don't think I ever saw anger in a positive light. I yeah. only saw it as a negative, bad emotion or thing. Yeah. When in reality, it is just another emotion and obviously it can cause harm, but it's still a neutral emotion. Like you're allowed to feel angry. For sure. And I think I wasn't taught that. I, no, I think that was a beautiful way of putting it. I definitely think like uh, being so confrontational can also not be a good thing. Like it took me a long time. With my family, I feel very comfortable being confrontational because I have been since I was young, but like it took me so long in my life to feel uh, comfortable being confrontational with absolutely anybody else who wasn't my mom, dad, or brother, like oh, truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I have to commend you. I mean, I think that you've done a great job this year of finding your voice and being able to articulate how you feel. I mean, we have had 
obviously conflict behind the scenes because we're best friends and that shit just happens. And business partners. And, business, and, and <laughs> truly more business yeah. partners than friends. Yeah. Uh, well, not not that we are. Like more <laughs> okay. conflict because we're business, business partners than friends. Um, but I... I mean, you've taught me so much too. I feel like we've been able to like find our voices together and be able to don't, 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 (laughs) don't suck those tears back in. Fuck. (laughs) <laughs> bring the tissues out. Bring the tissues out. <laughs> it turns out we are going to cry. No, I'm just so grateful for you because um, in so many instances in my life where I have felt like I um, wanted to voice how I felt, it hasn't been like a, a safe, receptive environment. And you make it so easy to for us to just like have a nice open conversation about whatever's bothering us. And like, I always, we talk about this, but like, we always know that no matter what we say, we're always going to be best friends at the end of the day. So like having that safe environment I think has allowed us to both grow oh my god no literally I think that's why God was like we need this bitch and this bitch to be thrown together together in a jacuzzi because they both need to learn this yeah no but I I really do I commend you because I know I see you and Cal and your similarities of being raised a certain way and I have to imagine it's very hard to be able to find your voice if you've never had to before oh my god Thank you. Yeah, of course. Sorry to bring Cal into it, but no. I just see a lot of similarities between I you two. Cal. I feel like Cal teaches me a lot about you and you teach me a lot about Cal. Really? For sure. Oh my God. Well, I told you I'm literally marrying you the other day. Wait, oh my <laughs> God. Wait, wait, wait. That was so funny. We were at a wedding <laughs> and Rem randomly texts me and goes, I'm marrying you. And I was like, huh? And then she goes, Cal just said, wow, we have a patio. Cause we were at a hotel mm-hmm. and he takes his coffee and went out and sat there. And I was like, mm-hmm. literally me. She was doing it at the exact same time. I've just never had anyone in my life, like do little like quirky things <laughs> that you guys do. And I'm like, wow, it's the same person. Ashley's even more. She's like, oh my God, I'm going to go like water the plants and like fill up the pool. Her, <laughs> her roller in her hair, her face mask, her <laughs> lap desk, that bitch live. I always say whenever I see Ash, she lives life to the fullest. Yes. Anything she can do to give her a little boost. Like mm-hmm. she just seems always is like really zen and peaceful. And I, I think I'm working towards oh my God. being more like Ash Nicole. Oh my God. Yeah, what else would you wanna work on? Continuing on working through my PCOS. I haven't really talked about it on the pod cause I kept wanting to talk about it, but um, we've had so many guests and I feel like just like things, other things to talk about that I haven't had the chance to like sit and talk about everything. But um, at the top of this year, my big resolution that I made to myself was I wanted to get answers for my PCOS because I had so many years of my life of doctors not listening to me and being told to get on certain medications that I um, didn't know weren't right for my body. And, you know, that's not the doctor's fault. Well, the doctor's fault for not listening to me and making me not feel like I can say how I feel, yeah. but um, I mean, every doctor is obviously going to think of a, a, a different thing for other people. What? I flipped off the camera oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I'll take it Put back. It back. <laughs> I respect you, but no, I like, I, I understand, um, you know, and that's why it's important if you can to see so many different doctors, yeah. for, you know, to get doc- doctor's opinions. But I did a vlog on my channel, a f- maybe like a few months ago now, but basically at the top of this year, I saw a specialist for PCOS. And for so long, I hadn't seen a quote unquote specialist because um, through my research online, I mean, no one tells you what to do or where to go. And everybody online had told me to s- go see an endocrinologist. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. Like That's what they're saying to do. I saw the endocrinologist. She was such a nice lady, but um, had me on medication that was making me feel sick. And when I um, went and... I saw her multiple times throughout the years. I kept saying like, I don't know this. It's just, it's making me feel ill. I just, nothing's working for mm-hmm. me. She had me on birth control. Um, and I kept like, telling her how I felt. And she kept being like, just give it a few more months. Just give it a few more months. And I was like, okay, I'll keep trying. That's the worst part about anything hormone related. You gotta You're just like, keep okay, waiting. I'll be back in four months. Mm-hmm. Just to see and like doing blood tests and things. Um, and so eventually I hit this wall where I was like, I, I'm tired of, of not being given another option. Like this, it it feels like I'm just being strung along for who knows how long. Um, And so finally one night I cracked and I was like, I'm sure there's a specialist. Like, I, why didn't I think of this earlier? No, yeah. But everyone online said endocrinologist. So I looked it up and there was a, there's quite a few PCOS specialists, obviously way less than endocrinologists out there or, or GPs or anything. But um, 
I, or even just gynecologists, but uh, with a specialty in PCOS. Mm -hmm. And so I found this doctor and I went and saw her and her, I have to say her demeanor is a lot more like stern and cold Mm -hmm. than I've ever had. And I left the first appointment. I called you in hysterics. I've like never cried that hard before because basically in like a 10 minute appointment, I found out so many things that I had been searching for answers for, for years. It was like, all of this came rushing in and such a quick appointment. She looked at my blood work and was like, wow, you have like very, a very severe case. And I was like, well, then how come no one's ever acted with any sort of urgency with me? And so like that already made me want to cry. And I was like, don't cry, don't cry in here. Don't cry in here. Also, I mean, not to put words in your mouth, Mm -hmm. but I'm sure that you've been very open about like just your, your, the weight struggle over the years and like um, eating disorders and stuff like that. Like, the struggle of that on top of the PCOS is like, like I can't even imagine how like part of you probably just broke hearing that when you're like, wow, like feeling bad for yourself. I felt very badly for my, my- I hope I worded that okay. No, yeah, 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 no, exactly. I mean, I just got so many answers in such a short amount of time that I didn't even know were so easy to to find all in one one doctor's appointment. But I agree with that. I mean, I am just a normal girly who's trying to figure it out, who kept going to doctors, who kept getting like the necessary like wrong information. Also, it's hard when you're like, I'm trying to do the I right thing. I was trying so hard, so hard. And then every, I feel like everything that I did, I found that I was not even doing it quote unquote correctly. Like mm-hmm. I was working out cause they're like, you know, work out. Then I found out that's the wrong workout to do. I was mm-hmm. eating a certain amount. They're like, well, that's actually wrong. You're eating too little. Now you're eating too much. Now you're doing these things. Now that's this, now it's that you're on the wrong medication. So I was just like, I don't know what to do. But seeing this doctor and hearing her expertise and she's like, look, I see 20 women a day mm-hmm. and everybody has a very, it's, it's a broad spectrum of, of how severe to how uh, unsevere. And so to find out it was a severe case, I was like, wow sucks for me. And then also I was like, wow, um, how come no one's ever, even like the way that I found out was so blase when I got the three year next one on taken out and they're like, oh, you shouldn't have had this. And I'm like, well, great. This was in my arm for three years. No wonder I had like such a horrible time. Um, sorry, I'm talking a lot, but fast forward, found out I had a very severe case. Um, found out that all the medication that I'd been on was the wrong medication. I've been putting my body through birth control for so many years that I shouldn't be on birth control. Um, and so basically in that moment, she was like, you're going to start Ozempic. And so I've talked about this on my channel on a vlog, but I haven't like sat down and talked about it. And at first I was so overwhelmed. I mean, I cried, called you crying because I was like so relieved that she was like, this medication is going to like, it, I, I think it'll work for you. It's worked for so many of my patients, but obviously I had so much stress because I was like, well, I just made an episode six months ago, a pretty basic saying I wouldn't do it because <laughs> the endocrinologist was like, I could put you on it, but I just won't because of like these problems. And I had brought up those problems to this doctor because I was like, look, I'm hearing all these different things. Mm-hmm. I don't know who to believe. And she was like, look, I personally believe that it's better to work on your health now than like hypothetically in the future because the endocrinologist was like, look, I think Ozempic would help you or semaglutide in general would help you. Um, But, you know, I don't want you to lose all this weight, get pregnant and then gain the weight back and then be at risk for gestational diabetes. And I was like, I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this new doctor and I was like, well, they said this, like, I I believe what she said. And she's like, I understand. But also at the same time, like, it's not like you're just going to take this medication and boom, you lose the weight and it stays off forever. Mm -hmm. Like, this is more of a lifestyle change for you. Like you need to be working out and finding out like workouts that work for your body. Mm -hmm. You need to improve your diet. You need to do all these sorts of things that like are going to change your lifestyle in tandem with the medication. So I was like, okay. And I was like, well, I'm scared about children one day. But when I tell you this doctor's walls, I've shown you pictures covered in so many baby photos and women writing in uh, like handwritten letters. It's crazy saying like, thank you to the doctor. My miracle baby wouldn't be here without the doctor. So obviously that gave me hope, but also just such a scary thing. Also, I was scared of the internet backlash because of everything. Um, All to say, um, I have talked about it again on the channel already, but Here's the big pod one. Um, I've been on it since uh, I started in June. So it's been like quite a long time actually I've been on it. And when I tell you, I have never felt better in my life. Now I'm not coming on here and telling you that everyone should be on Ozempic because that is not the thing. Um, And I'm actually switching medications right now. And I'm like in the middle of like figuring all these things out. And in tandem with that, I'm also on a bunch of other like supplements. I found out my body makes 
nine times, like through blood work, the testosterone that I should be making. That's why you build muscle so quick, probably. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and also just like that feeds into the PCOS. Uh -huh. All my levels are off. So I've been working very closely this year with my doctor too. Nine um, times. Nine times. Dang. It just, it all... It all like finally made sense um, to try and figure it out. I know people were gonna have things to say, but I didn't also wanna like hide it from the internet. Um, I think the one thing that annoys me about it is I've been open about it. So sometimes I'll get comments down from people being like, oh, Zempic queen, or like, just like trying to be mean about it. Yeah. And I just think, A, we need to stop commenting on people's bodies in general. Yeah. And B, um, while I was scared of the backlash, when I released the vlog, I had like, Every single comment was so nice about how excited they are that I'm finding uh, answers for myself and how they know how hard I've struggled and all these sorts of things. And so when I get those comments, it doesn't annoy me because I'm like uh, anything other than just like, what do you think you're doing? Like, I'm finally getting answers for something that I've been struggling with my whole life. Like, yeah. I don't understand why someone has to be mean about that. I do know, obviously it's got a bad rap and all those sorts of things, but like for someone who actually is insulin resistant, I have insulin resistance and my body literally processes insulin like a diabetic. Like, of course it, it's working for me well, and I feel amazing. One, you are glowing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like truly, I feel like I see that you feel your best and I've known you for so long. Mm -hmm. Like even at like some of our lows, like mm -hmm. you're glowing so differently lately. Like the glow is different, <laughs> but it makes me happy. And one thing I've truly respected the most, and I will go to bat for you forever about this. Like you have always had your viewers as like the main thing for you. Like you're like, I want to protect them. I don't want to like tell them to do something and then like change yes. it. Like you've put them so much above you that I'm like, I just respect you for being like, you know what? That I'm aware that this is a fad thing right now. I don't want people running and doing things that aren't meant for them. Like you purposely like didn't want to talk about it until you wanted to. Yeah. And I, I just like, I truly respect that so much. And also, and this is what I told you back in June or whenever you first started it. I was like, if it was any other medication with a different name, you wouldn't question it. Yeah. It's you're just so right. because there's this stigma because of celebrities and all these people taking it who don't need or it. Or abusing it. You're yeah. abusing it. Even people I know who like doctors are telling them to stop and they like won't, you know mm. what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, I feel like people are gonna say whatever they want, but in the end, like this is what your specialist is recommending you. Yeah. Like you don't need to worry about that. And like, you. you really are glowing it's so different. It I makes love me you. happy. Thank you. And I also think it's important to let people know that it is a tandem thing. Like you can't just nothing's like a miracle pill. Like there really is nothing like that. If it was, it, people would be doing that. Like you have to put in the work and the effort and it sucks to hear all of that, like that you were doing all these things wrong, but also it's, it's so validating knowing like, wow, it's been a struggle for a reason. And I do have nine times the testosterone or I do have whatever the case is. And I know you said like, you're already in the process of switching to a different one that you're a different medication that your doctor thinks would be even better. Yeah. Screw people who leave hate shit. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. That was so nice. That was actually like a huge reason why I was crying. I totally like I had the worst memory, but I forgot um, when I found out that the medications I was on was wrong. I was obviously crying for myself because I was like, again, like this sucks. But I was also crying because I have been so open about medications that I'm on and my whole journey. And I know so many women that reached out to me that were like, I went on this and this because of you. And like, oh my God, you're on these. I'm gonna go talk to my doctor and blah. And I felt so guilty. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, how many people got on these medications because of me? And it didn't work for them just as much as it didn't work for me. And people are wasting their money and all these things. But I have to hope that their yeah. doctor like told them, maybe maybe other people have better doctors also, than I do too. And they said no. <laughs> also like maybe that did work for them, but yeah. I do think it shows like there is a responsibility of like, oh, like I can't just say medications online and- or in the end be like, hey, like, please talk to your own doctor. Yes. You know? And that's why I wanted to wait until I was like, I don't even know if this is going to work because if it doesn't work, then like, I'm not going to keep just like telling people to go on medications yeah. or like or saying that I'm doing it and inadvertently telling people to go on medications. But I waited a few months, did the update. Things have been great. Um, I'm very excited to keep working with my doctor in the future. And that's what I'm excited. Sorry. That was so long, but I've been no. wanting to say it forever. But 
Yes. She told me in my most recent, I did like the ultrasound and I saw like the PCOS on my ovary. It's like little like hairy things. They're right? like little, like they're like, teeth? um, yeah, they're like, well, they on the uh, ultrasound, it looks like holes. Oh, um, on your, Ooh. I know, no, it's really <laughs> crazy. And she's like, do you see this looks like a pearl necklace? And I was like, yeah, it's so cute. But it's like crazy. Cause you can just like to visibly see what has been causing What's me all causing? these issues. Um, but going off of uh, what you said, like I, for the first time, how I knew, like, first of all, my energy levels were just boom up like Instantly. so quickly, which I think said a lot. And that made me feel like I was, it was working for me. I've had zero side effects, like oh, since the beginning. I know the people who I know who are on it have had crazy side effects. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's probably because they don't need it. Yeah. Versus someone who, whose body's actually like absorbing the nutrients of it. And it's working. It's I, working, you know? I was so scared. I've heard so many people have, people have horrible side effects. I'm good. I do my, my dose and then I'm like on my very merry way for the day, which like is great. But the best thing of all for me was getting my period back because I haven't had a consistent period which, since I was like ever. <laughs> no, and that's why like, again, screw any backlash. Like the reason you're doing this is for not only your health, but you know, hopefully to be able to have kids one day. Yeah. Like that's truly why you went to this specialist in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So again, if it was called anything else, like obviously it has a bad rep, but it was a medication before it was a fat anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been around. It's nothing new. It's just new to what people are Hollywood. Abusing you know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, sorry, it's not new to Hollywood. It's new to TikTok where everyone knows. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like Hollywood's been doing it for a while. I will say I saw that one of the semaglutides just got approved or something within them yes. for, for weight loss. Yes. So that's, that's amazing. I mean, the thing is like, obesity also is something that needs to be tackled within mm -hmm. itself. So I do hope this narrative of like, of, um, you know, loss aid or just like, Oh, I'm fit queen. Like trying to make me feel bad for it. Like I, it, I don't feel bad about it. No. I was prescribed it by my doctor. I go to a regular ass pharmacy to pick yeah. it up. Like it's a normal thing. Um, and I feel, Oh, I said this to my vlog, but I was like, I feel the healthiest in my, I've ever felt in my life, even but when I was like at a quote unquote, like lower weight, mm -hmm. when I thought I was being so healthy and eating super clean and, and working out all the time, like I was so lethargic. No, I was so sad. That's what I mean about you glowing. Like, I'm like, I remember you then and you now, like, even though you were quote lighter on the scale, I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, yeah, the glow is different. Thank the glow you. is fucking hit. I really and I get why you got a ring on your finger. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a culmination. I like, I really haven't lost like a ton of weight. Like in it, my first quote unquote health journey, I had lost significantly more weight, but it's just so crazy how like, and I've been stagnant at this weight for like quite a few months now, but like every day I wake up and I have so much energy and I'm not tired all the time. And I actually like my mental health has improved because I can actually have a productive day and I'm not just like exhausted and chugging caffeine all the time mm -hmm. and all these things. So it's been um, such a blessing for me. And I am incredibly grateful that I have the resources and, able, and ability to have the medication. Well, I'm proud of you. I love you. Thank you for your support throughout. Like truly, I remember calling you and being hysterical and like you saved me in that moment. No, I will literally cut a bitch. <laughs> I was just scared of overall in general. It's I'm just like, a scary thing. I'm like, you can be scared about other things. You're not going to be scared about people's opinions. <laughs> Fuck that shit. I love you. Thank you. Oh. Sorry, I just took up so much time. No. Everything that you want to talk about, let's talk about. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you're really good. Honestly, one thing, I really didn't have much to like the main thing I want to bring into the new year is something that I've gotten a little less good doing now, but for a while I was doing it so good. Like every day I was sitting and thinking of like five things I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you how like I was so at peace when beginning or at night or whatever, like any time of the day, like just thinking of things I'm grateful for. I feel like it helped my mental health so much and being put into perspective of like what really matters. And I feel like this is going to sound weird, but follow me. Um, it was one of those days that on TikTok, it was like, today is the best day to manifest what you want or whatever. I was like, okay, let's try it. <laughs> so I like, I have my notebook, I have my journal. And I was trying to think of like goals and things I wanted to hit. And the, again, past Alicia, past New Year's resolutions, I would be like, lose X amount of weight, make this much money. Like very just like, like basic things like that or whatever. Wait, you used to write those things or yeah. you started writing those things? No, no, no I used to. Okay. I used to, which is, there's nothing wrong with those types of goals, but those always were like this amount of followers, this amount of subscribers, yeah. this amount of money. Um, those were always the goals I had in mind that I that I wanted and some I reached, some I didn't. But I was sitting there and I'm like, I couldn't come up with anything because you know, like followers are great, but also like 
that can lead to like empty happiness. Money's awesome, but also that isn't fulfilling and like give you life and purpose, you know? Um, so I was sitting there, I didn't have much on my list. And I was like, I like, I want, like, it's the best day to hotly to write your goals. <laughs> like, like I need to write what everything are my goals? I can think of. What are my goals? So I was kind of struggling. And then, and I had a few things on there, but I remember at one point specifically, I was like, okay, Alicia, you're overthinking this. Pretend whatever you write is going to happen. Almost like a genie in a bottle situation. You have three wishes. Like, what would you actually wish for? And then the next thing I know, this is like so weird. I filmed a whole YouTube video about this, um, which isn't out yet. Actually, by the time you're watching this, maybe. Having the mentality of this will actually happen. The next thing I know, all the things I started writing were for other people. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <sighs> Bitch, it was so crazy. Like, and I didn't notice till I was like five or six down. Again, I, meant, I mentioned I had those like family members or like good friends. Um, going through health things. Like that was one of the first one, like that she would fully like have no more health issues. Like that their cancer would be gone. Um, bless my parents. They've done so much for me. Like such things like that. The next thing I know, I'm like, this is damn near a prayer request. Like, <laughs> this is like, this is like, wait, what is a prayer request? A prayer request is like, Hey, can you pray for me? My friend oh, has cancer. Wow. You know what I mean? Okay. Like that type of stuff. Um, that type of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like a prayer request would be like, Hey, can you pray to God for me about this? You know what I mean? Like when you asked your mom to pray for us. For Lana. Lana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, mom, prayer request. Pray I'm cashing it in. Means. Yeah. I'm cashing it in. <laughs> Obviously that's not a golden, like you get whatever you pray for thing either. But <laughs> then it was crazy. Cause the next thing I noticed my list that used to be like make X amount of money or things all about me. And not that those things are selfish, but they can feel very selfish switch to like other people. And then I was like, wow, not that I think I've been doing this wrong my whole life, <laughs> but damn near, I was like, I feel the most at peace I have in a long time. And I feel like, what can I add from this world than take? And like, again, regardless of who or what you believe in, like, I think that is just the best mentality to go into this new year with of like, how can I just be there for people? How can I just like help? And then at the same time, I'm like, is it a coincidence that this has been one of the best like career years for me when I haven't been trying like I used to? I think our jobs can be very selfish. Yeah. I mean, I'm tired of my own voice. I can't imagine how mm -hmm. other me, people me, 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 me. Yeah, I feel that. like me, me, me. But yeah, and I don't know if that's like a organization or charity or something else to like look into to the new year. I know I'm always like, we should find like a, a shelter to like, um, like a, an animal shelter to, oh, your poor allergies probably couldn't handle it. That's okay, I'll, I'll load up on Zotac. That's okay, I'll suck it up. Yeah, I will, don't you worry. Um, I don't know, just something like that. So I think- um, Philanthropic queen. Philanthropic. Entering her philanthropy era. Oh my God. <laughs> But yeah, weird, right? Especially I, for like, I've always been so like numbers, numbers, numbers. Yeah. And honestly, it took most of those numbers going down for me to like realize like, okay, like it doesn't define me, but like, I don't know. But it was so weird. Write a list, challenge for people at home write a list of goals you have in life and then write a list of holy shit. If it would actually come true, like things you would do and like just compare them because it's kind of weird when you have resolutions that are so empty handed yeah, or that make you feel like you're going to fail versus like, like setting yourself up. Yeah. yeah versus yeah. ones that are like, what do I actually want in life? Yeah. Like truly, you yeah. know, I don't know. I, Fun, right. I'm so beyond proud of you. I feel like when you were talking, first of all, I made a, a face that when you were talking about um, when you were trying to write it down and you had nothing because I was like genuine, like, <laughs> holy shit, because I, I could see where you were going with this. I didn't even know, but I feel like that just shows like true contentness within yourself, which is something that we should, like we all strive for and not everybody's able to have. So I think that's such a beautiful thing of like, you've learned to let go of things. You have- um, grown so much. I felt like your therapist sitting here right now when you said your therapist took out the old yeah. paper. Like that's truly how I felt because I mean, the amount of conversations we've had over the years of like trying to not focus so much on on the numbers or the the empty views or things like that was like in the beginning of the podcast. Like that's, yeah. that was a big thing for you. And so to be able to see you grow out of that and also like to see, I feel like I saw it happening in real time, but like now you've come like full circle, like understandment of it. It's such a beautiful thing. And I'm so incredibly happy for you because I feel like that's true, genuine fulfillment and contentness within yourself that um, no one else can give to you. Thank so I think you. that's incredible. I'm so happy for you. I think that um, agreed, like this job that we have is very 
self fulfilling and it's very just like about ourselves all the mm. time me 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 so I agree with what you're what you're saying and I think that it's just like you should really pat yourself on the back because that is incredible that you. you are like to sit down and write things for other people is especially like from where you've come from like I think that's it's just huge oh my god thank you but if you know in a year I'm sitting here and I have a little more specific goals <laughs> and that, but that's also fine and I think like a, a healthy balance is yeah. like I think that's that's amazing you should want the best things for yourself yeah. but I think again like that just shows how truly content you are with your life if you can sit down and not and nothing comes to mind that you want like what a beautiful privileged amazing life that is thank you I think the main thing that started it all was as like views or money was starting to go down, realizing like, dude, the fact that I just still get to do this job, mm -hmm. like, like that's insane. Like the more years go, like it's about to be 16 years that I did, I've done this. And I'm like, Damn. what? I'm coming up on 20. <laughs> like I remember being in elementary school and they would like during an assembly or something, the teachers would like say how many years they'd been at the school and they'd be like 25. And I was like, Oh my uh -huh. God, like what? I'm like, uh -huh. I'm about to be 20. Yeah. Like that's insane. That is crazy. Um, Have you been posting all 16 years? I feel like I always say that we started at the same time. I did. In 2008, I posted, but those videos are not up. Oh. Which is, I deleted my first video and I was very sad. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wait, so when did you really start? 2000, I mean, technically the first video up on my channel right now is 2009. Oh shit. I always say you've been doing it for a decade with me. No, but it's, all, it's almost, it's almost like two. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, anyways, just being grateful that I, this is still what I get to do. And I remember at one point I told my mom, I was like, mom, if I could just, I remember when I tried to apply for the YouTube partner program and they needed your social security to pay you. My mom's like, we can't give this over the internet. And I was like, no, please. Like, I promise it's legit. It's real. I was always that kid who would like enter contests. Like, mom, we're going to win. <laughs> so she's like, no, 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 we can't. The animals. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember telling her, I was like, dude, like if I could like do this just and cut even at the end of the year, and this can be my job. I would like be so happy. And then looking back to that now, I'm like, Alicia, like you're still doing that. Like you're, you're still here. People still care. That's crazy. So I'm proud of you. That's like, thanks. I know <laughs> I'm so aware. Me telling you not to give a fuck what people talk about or think, but now here I am like, oh, I know people said in the beginning, we would just compliment each other on the podcast. So oh, I feel whatever. like I'm just like, oh my God, I love you so much. Still, I think that <laughs> it's like truly if anybody, again, don't care what they think. And then also, if they listen to the pod from the beginning and now like that, that was a lot of growth between the, for the first You're episode right. and now for you, that's, right. that's really huge. Thank you. But yes. yeah, I'm honestly so excited for 2024. I feel really good about the year. I feel like, um, things are just, <gasps> things are happening. Things are coming. Things are happening. Yes. I'm actually really excited for the new year. Things are happening. Um, we have so much more in store for you guys. Um, pretty basic empire is just going to keep growing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know how I deemed the summer of Remy back mm -hmm. when I met Cal, I'm deeming this year and I feel it in my soul, <laughs> the year of pretty basic. <gasps> I feel it. I thought you were going to say, say Alicia. Year. And oh. I was like, no, 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 no. I thought you were going to say Alicia. And I'm like, Ram, I love you. But like, we've said it and it didn't happen before. So like. <laughs> no, the year of pretty basic. You individually, me individually together. It's going to be the best Peace. year. And anybody that listens also, it's going to be the best year ever. I love it so much. And we love you guys very, very much. Thank you so much for listening to season five of pretty basic. We are going to be coming back really excited for season six comment below any guests that you want to see in season six um next week is going to be a replay episode and then we are going to be gone for a few weeks so you won't hear from us for three weeks um but that's good because then we're gonna have more time for stories mm -hmm. get ready for season six and we have lots of fun things coming in the new year we do and we can't wait we love you guys so much and have a wonderful new year's bye <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I was like, bye. 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 <laughs>